I want to share another story with you, and for that, I'm going to ask my friend Robert Kalachin to come up here and to talk about another country that is uh, an amazing uh, result of praying for God to expand the GLS into the most difficult countries. We'll sit down and talk about it, and while we do that, I should tell you a little bit about um, Robert. Robert um, used to be a restaurant owner in California. I think it was a famous pizza place, if I remember correctly. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then he was hugely impacted by the GLS. And then he was also the man who brought the GLS to Vietnam. We had tried to bring the GLS to Vietnam, I don't know how many years. I think I was there several times. We never found the right people. We never found the right uh, team. Then we ran across Ro Robert because he attended the JLS. And Robert, before you go on, tell us a little bit about you. What brought you to Vietnam? I mean, you're an American, right? I'm an American. I grew up in the hippie days, and <laughs> Vietnam was not on my map. But my wife and I weren't able to have children. Tried to do adopt for three years. Next thing, there was a Vietnamese boy born in California and we adopted him. Um, my wife had this unyielding desire for a second child, and the next thing I knew, I was getting off a plane in Saigon, hit by heat, humidity, sights, smells, sounds, everything that this Newport Beach boy was not used to. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what did you do, what happened then? Well, you know, it was there that I met all these little kids in this orphanages in different places that we ended up, and, and I saw the needs. You know, and, and I left Vietnam in 2001, so we had stayed extra five days because of September 11th. And when I left, I said, I'll never come back here again. And I'm sure all of heaven laughed, because I've been back over 60 times. But I came home <laughs> haunted by the faces of the kids that I had met and said, you know what, every kid deserves a chance. And, and I still am haunted by the faces of some of those kids. When, when did you go to the, your first Global Leadership Summit, and where was that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. In 2011, my, my home church is The Crossing in Costa Mesa, and they support our ministry, and they had a substantial check for us. And, and they were, we're in the courtyard, and, and the, one of the pastors is handing me the check, and, and I'm trying to reach it. And, and, you know, I didn't want to tear the thing, but he's holding on to it. And, 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 and they said, we, we'd like you to come to the Leadership Summit this week. And I said, okay, you know, give me the check. And, and, uh, and you know, and I went, and, and it was in, in 2011. And, and I literally, I'm one of those people that has to sit in the front because I get distracted easy. And, and, and I'm sitting there, and, and I wept for two days. You know, it, it was, you know, and, and I had people, because they know us at church, saying, are you okay? Do you need some prayer? And, but you know what? What God was confirming is that I was at the right place at the right time, and the right stuff was happening. Right. You know, it, it just... Keep your mind up. <laughs> okay, Robert, that's what happened in America. So then uh, you've been in Vietnam in this um, children ministry. So how did, the, how did we end up with the JLS in Vietnam, and how did that happen? Well, we started right after we, I, we came back in 2001 with the adoption. We started an organization called Giving It Back to Kids, and that's giving kids a chance, and it's extensive work, and God's given us incredible favor. But part of it is I realize that we can't do it. You know, that I, I firmly believe that the hope of the world is the local church when it's working right. And, uh, and, but we had built relationships with the government. We had built relationships with the local churches. And, we, you know, when, when we were approached by Willow Creek, I said, yeah, we can get this done. And in 2012, we started our first site with 200 people. Yes. What's happening now? Where are we now in Vietnam? And what's your, what do you see for the future? Well, this year for 2016, we're expecting at least 1,600 people in over three, no less than three sites. What? So what do you see for the future? You know, for the future, I'll tell you, Gary, just in, in you know, what, what touched me is after we did the one in, in Hanoi with the license thing, I was talking to the, uh, the pastor a month or two later, and I said, so how was it? He said, oh, it's good. I said, well, do you see a need for more of these? And, and, and he looked at me and he said, Robert, he says, I have over 1,007 churches that I oversee that made up by 160,000 believers and less than 300 trained leaders. I need leadership training for my churches.
Yeah. I want to close with that. I mean, whether it's in the United States or whether it's in Kazakhstan, in Zanzibar, or in Vietnam, this conference that emanates from this stage in the next two days will be seen in 128 countries around the world, some of them as unlikely as Zanzibar or Vietnam. God is just doing an amazing work. And I could just give you story after story when Bill and I went to Vietnam to meet with the government authorities, which eventually resulted in getting a permission to do it officially. And so I'm so grateful, Robert, for what you have done and what you're continuing to do. You have a great vision for Vietnam, and we are so deeply in your debt, and, and we are so grateful to you and your work well, we're and your team. We're, we're indebted to Willow Creek and, and, and the vision of this ministry. It's, it's huge. It's impacted me personally impacted the nation that I serve and, and, and the churches there. Well, Thank you.